alongside the recommencement of services down under in Australia with national carrier Qantas, it isn't just them that have also been seeing the changes roll on through. Across the pond in New Zealand, their own national carrier, that being of Air New Zealand, is also in the process of reinstating services in a domestic and also international sense following years of these flights being suspended, as the country essentially shut itself off from the world one would argue longer than most countries, resulting in a somewhat, you could argue, depleted national carrier that has been like this for a significant period of time, even as other markets have continued to recover. Getting the airline back to a position where it can restart services rapidly is great, and finally having the global footprint it as a carrier deserves alongside what the New Zealand people deserve too. It can't be forgotten the work that goes into getting an airline in the position Air New Zealand were in to where they are now and where they will be in future years. It's by no stretch of the imagination easy, and airline executives continue to commend the incredible staff and more that have taken the time and showcased extreme levels of dedication to get the flag carrier back in business, rehiring more than 2,000 people across various fields, including pilots and cabin crew, is a program that the airline believes will leave it in the best possible position from now on, to which they've rehired already about half of this number. The industry, as we know, has been struggling from recent staff shortages across the board, following the resurgence from the pandemic that most airlines have been unable to capitalise from due to the lack of staff generally in every single field. And Air New Zealand wants to do their very best to avoid this, giving their customers the best possible experience on offer. July is being earmarked as the crucial month for the carrier, with a host of destinations being resumed, especially their Australian destinations, with all nine ports being linked back to New Zealand. The return of the Boeing 777-300ER will also help with the carrier's international network, naturally adding a significant number of seats per week, actually in and around the tens of thousands on flights around the globe. Although, given the reactivation times for each 777-300ER being at just about a couple of months, this will be done strategically to benefit the network in the best possible manner. Regarding the specifics behind the routes, well, from their hub Auckland, Honolulu will restart from July 4th, three times weekly. Meanwhile, Tahiti on July 6th with two times weekly. Hobart and Cairns will resume on July 5th and 7th respectively alongside the Sunshine Coast on July 9th. This is for the Australian side of things, if you will, out of Auckland. Houston begins again on July 7th, three times weekly. Queenstown, Wellington and Christchurch also will be all getting boosts with the reactivation of key routes to Australia and other destinations as New Zealand once again opens its borders and drops testing requirements, allowing for a more seamless journey in and out of the country and once again putting it back on the map as a lovely holiday destination whether you're in Australia, the United States or parts of Asia. It's definitely worth a visit, especially the South Island which I can personally recommend from visiting myself. Self. If you have any thoughts on the latest at Air New Zealand, including the massive reactivation plans we are seeing on a domestic and also international sense, you can let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.